Hey, y'all. My name is Susan Sparks, and I'm the senior pastor here at Madison Avenue Baptist Church in New York City. We are a diverse community brought together by faith. We hope that you enjoy our service today. I was heading down the path early this week of writing a sermon about Jesus' baptism because that's the lectionary and I was trying to be the good foot soldier and preach on the lectionary, which I don't always do anyway, but um, somewhere midweek I was like, "Uh uh-uh, no, no, I can't do it. Um, And maybe you felt like I did, but you know, I just finally picked up the paper for the like 900,000th time and went, I cannot remember a week like this. I mean, I know we've all seen bad times in the past, but I just can't remember a seven-day period where we've hit headlines like this, back to back to back to back. I mean, just this week in Puerto Rico, there was a 6.4 earthquake and two aftershocks with a 5.2 and a 5.9, killing at least one person and wreaking havoc throughout the island. Just this week, the United States almost went to war. When our president ordered the assassination of an Iranian general and Iran retaliated by bombing U.S. bases, in that retaliation, Iran accidentally shoots down a commercial airliner that kills everyone on board, all 176 people. And then, if that's not enough, at the general's funeral, a stampede kills 56 mourners and injures hundreds of others just this week. I mean, just this week, 12 people are killed in the South by these horrible storms that just came through, including an elderly couple killed in Louisiana when their trailer was blown 100 feet in the air just this week. And just this week, fires have devastated Australia. It's killed over 27 people. The fire has burned 17 million acres. 3,000 homes have been destroyed, and over a billion animals have died. Just this week. And that's just the newspaper headlines. I'm not even touching what's going on in the headlines of our own lives. Every single person here is carrying their own pain, their own tragedy that we add to those headlines. So it's been some week, a rather ominous start to 2020. So if you're like me, you just put the paper down and you think, is there any rhyme or reason to life? I mean, Why is this happening? Where is God in all of this? I mean, it's easy to feel alone in times like these. It's easy to feel like, you know, no one has ever asked. No one's ever doubted. No one's ever asked questions like, where is God and how could this happen? No one's ever seen such violence. No one's ever experienced such a week as this. But brothers and sisters, we're not the only ones who have gone through something like this. Because all you have to do is pick up this book and you realize that nothing new is under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun, including a week like this. I would suggest that you turn to the book of Ecclesiastes for that proof. Heather read us out of the first chapter. You know, Ecclesiastes is not a book that Hallmark would ever use for its greeting card business, okay? Just not gonna happen. Most of the book of Ecclesiastes rails about the brutal, senseless nature of the world. 
For example, Heather read part of her reading was Ecclesiastes 1, 13 and 14. This is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun and see all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I mean, in fact, our Bible study group that Heather and Kevin Davis are leading has been reading a book entitled The Sin of Certainty, this book, The Sin of Certainty, by Peter Enns, and one of the chapters is about Ecclesiastes, and I just want to read you um, a little clip from this. All signs indicate that God has orchestrated an absurd existence for us humans, as futile as the cycles of nature. Just think of the poor old sun. Ecclesiastes tells us it rises and sets every day without a rest, again and again and again, with nothing to show for it. No progress made, no payday waiting at the end. Or consider the wind, it blows this way and that round and around in a never-ending, meaningless, futile, tedious cycle. The streams, too, never stop flowing into the sea, yet the sea never fills up. All that effort, but it makes zero difference. Just like nature, humans run around in circles, working hard day in and day out, and ultimately nothing to show for it, because at the end, we all die. Yep, that's a Hallmark card, right there, right there. I mean, can't you picture it? A beautiful sunset on the beach, or, or better yet, like a little fuzzy kitten in a blanket with the caption, nothing matters. <laughs> Life has no meaning, and then we die. Thinking of you, <laughs> Ecclesiastes, man, this is a hard book about hard realities. But then, then there's the ending. Somewhere towards the end of this book, the voice changes. And there's this new narrator who doesn't try to change or argue around the harsh realities presented earlier in the book. The narrator simply affirms them. Yep, life is hard. But then he adds one simple thing. Trust God anyway. Ecclesiastes 12, 12 through 13. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God, keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of everyone. In short, life is caught hard, life is complicated, life is painful, but trust in God anyway. Now, let's just think about that from a logic standpoint. In any place of pain, we have two choices. We can trust God or not. Now, if we trust God, if we have faith, Even if we're mad or confused or upset, we have a source of strength. We have a foundation, a rock from which we can face the world. It's like the lyrics from that beautiful anthem that the choir just sang. Stretch out your hands and comfort me. I am empty. Bring me, Lord, your living water. Of course, there's plan B. We could choose not to believe not to trust, and then all we have is ourselves. Now, humanists may think that's enough, but it only takes living through one crisis in this life to know better. Can I have an amen? Mm, mm Mm-mm-mm. Most of y'all know what I'm talking about. Let me add this one little, little blurb from the book. It's hard to keep trusting God when you see no reason to, yet... That is a profound paradox of faith in the book of Ecclesiastes. No matter how deep distrust and disillusionment may be, move toward God in trust anyway. When we reach that point where things simply make no sense, when our thinking about God and life no longer line up, when any sense of certainty is gone, and when we can find no reason to trust God but we still do, well, 
That is what trust, trust looks like at its brightest, when all else is dark. My message to that today is very simple. Notwithstanding the headlines, notwithstanding what's going on in our personal lives, notwithstanding that life is hard and unpredictable and, and painful, trust God anyway. Trust God anyway. Now, I say that with a lot of conviction, and I mean it, and I believe it, but I don't always do it so well. I'll be honest with y'all. I want you to know I wrote this sermon this week because this is exactly what I was struggling with. Trust and faith in the midst and juxtaposition to these headlines and all the stuff that's going on in the world. I kept reading those headlines and thinking to myself, yes, I want to be faithful. Yes, I want to trust, but I'm having a really hard time. Of course, it didn't help that I was also mad at God this week because the Packers were in the playoffs and our cable went out. Oh, oh. We had a lot of problems. But then, then in the midst of my struggles with the newspaper and the cable and with God, in the midst of those struggles, I flew to Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis is such a crazy combination of colorful things. You know, the blues and barbecue and Elvis. And it's got such a goofy side to it. Like I found this restaurant called the liquor store, which is hilarious. It's even more hilarious the fact that it specializes in breakfast. Don't you love that? Which means, you know, your friends can go, where do you want to go to breakfast? And you can go, oh, let's go to the liquor store. You know, that's just kind of kind of fun. Whatever, Baptist minister calling that out. Anyway, um, <laughs> Memphis has also got kind of a gritty, raw, courageous side. In fact, I saw this sign downtown describing folks from Memphis, and it reminded me a lot of this church. It says, quote, we are a culturally diverse, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, tell it like it is, straight from the hip, for better, for worse, tightly knit, grit and grind city, full of spirited folks. Yes, right? Tell me that's not MABC down to the ground. Well, I had the opportunity to meet one of these tell-it-like-it-is straight-from-the-hip folks at a record store on Beale Street. His name was Smokey. He was an elderly gentleman of color, maybe in his late 80s, early 90s perhaps, with the biggest smile you've ever seen. And when I walked in the record store, I said, how you doing? Like you do when you first meet somebody. And this was his answer. I'm the best I have ever been. I woke up. A lot of people didn't wake up today. And then I ate breakfast. A lot of people didn't have breakfast today. And then it got better. I was able to put on some clothes. A lot of people didn't have clothes to put on today. And then when I didn't think it could get any better, I went to work. A lot of people weren't able to go to work today. I was like, wow. And then he smiled and he goes, so how are you doing? <laughs> I guess you could just sort of see. <laughs> I laughed and I said, I'm doing, doing fine. I, I love your attitude, but you know, I got to ask. I was like, with all that's going on in the world today, how do you hold on to that joy, that positive view? And he was quiet for a minute. And in that quiet, some Otis Redding was playing in the background. And all of a sudden, Smokey starts doing this shoulder shimmy as he's standing there, just a little shimmy like this. And he says, you know, when I feel down, I just do a little shoulder shimmy. Just a little shoulder shimmy like this, and I shake off the devil. I love it. Isn't that great? Just a shaking off the devil. I just love that. And I watched him shimmying around the store doing his, you know, to Otis Redding shimmying a bit. And as I watched him, all of a sudden it made sense. Because here is this 80 plus year old black man in Memphis, Tennessee, born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, who clearly lived through some of the brutal civil rights battles that went on in Memphis who lived in the city where Dr. King was assassinated, was probably there in Memphis when Dr. King was assassinated, 
And this man has seen some hard times. He knew firsthand that life was hard, life is unpredictable, life is painful, yet here he was, dancing around the record store, doing his shoulder shimmy, shimmying his doubts, his devil, right off. Keeping the faith anyway. Brothers and sisters, that's our choice too. I mean, this is an unhappy business that God has given to us to be busy with. And yes, it can be said that all is vanity and all is chasing the wind. But when all is said and done, we still have to decide in the midst of the unpredictability and the pain, do we still believe? You know, I traveled to Memphis last week during the height of the horrible headlines on Wednesday afternoon to do all, of all things, a comedy show. <laughs> Our Life and Peace Store went to Memphis, and that seems like the last thing one should do in the middle of those tragic headlines. But you know what? I think it might have been the best thing. Apparently, I wasn't wrong, because the show was packed. And one thing that people kept saying over and over after the show as they left was how much they wanted to laugh that night. How hungry they were for joy. And please understand when they said it, this was not in disregard or disrespect of the tragedies at hand. It was in recognition of them. It was in recognition that we're all in the crosshairs of pain. It was in recognition that we don't have an answer to the why. But most importantly, it was in recognition that pain does not get the last word. It was in recognition that pain cannot and will not define us. Because somewhere deep in the human heart, there remains a little spark of hope. And so that night in our pain, in our laughter, somehow we were able to shimmy the devil off and helped us, and it helped us trust God any way. I mean, what's the alternative, y'all? Seriously, give up? I mean, implode into a black hole of anger and resentment, drown in our tears of sorrow? No. No, 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 as the poet Dylan Thomas wrote, do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Or as Elvis said many times, TCB. If you know anything about Elvis, TCB was his trademark. Honey, say it with me, taking care of business. That should be our trademark, too. It's my earrings. I say taking care of business for those of you fashionistas who have noticed. We got to take care of our business. You and I, you and I need to take care of our business because we have people that we need to love. We have people that we need to care for. We have people and situations that need healing. We have things to be learned and songs to be sung and and laughter to be shared, we have a world that desperately needs our gifts. Brothers and sisters, TCB, we got to take care of some business. And so in the midst of all these horrendous headlines and the pain in our own personal lives, remember, remember what you have. Remember what is good in your life and what is good in this world? Remember that the pain we feel cannot and will not define us. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're carrying, whatever is looming close in your windshield, you can get through it. You will get through it. Because all you have to do is face down, look it square in the eye, face down those harsh realities that surround us. And then shoulder shimmy that devil right off and trust God anyway. And the people said, Amen.
for joining us. Madison Avenue Baptist Church is located at 31st and Madison Avenue in New York City. Our website is www.mabcnyc.org.